Hello, Phoenix fans. I'm David Hibbard, play-by-play -play voice of Elon Phoenix football on the radio on the Elon IMG Sports Network. And it's my pleasure to sit down now with the 21st head coach of Elon football, Rich Skrosky. Coach, welcome back to campus. I know you must be very excited and, and ready to get to work as you embrace the challenge of, uh, of leading this football team. David, it's great to see you again. And so, so uh, it's so great to be back, you know, to see so many familiar faces and uh, accept this new challenge. You know, it's such a, an exciting time in our, our not only football program, but our athletic department, you know, as we, uh, you know, head into the CAA next year. So I'm really excited about it. And again, I couldn't uh, thank everybody enough for had a role in this uh, decision and uh, really ready to embrace the work. So lead us through the last week, a whirlwind <laughs> week for you. Yeah. Uh, to tell us about the initial contact from the university and, and how the process unfolded from there. You know, one of the neat things about coaching is you always learn, you know, mm -hmm. and you learn the profession of it. So this was uh, kind of a unique experience for me, but uh, kind of the short version uh, Dave Blank, our, our athletics director, kind of reached out a, a week ago today on Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, it was in, we had a recruiting weekend going on at Ball State, so it kind of made it, uh, you know, a little little different. Mm -hmm. So when the dinner was over, he and I had pretty long phone conversation. Uh, that led into we want you to come down on campus. That was set up for Monday, just this past Monday, and then. Uh, I interviewed with Dave and President Lambert, who was so good, and Wes and uh, uh, Jerry Francis. And uh, I was ready to get back on my flight to head back to Indiana. Mm -hmm. I was literally in the airport, and they called me back and said, Coach, you know, we, we'd like for you to stay and talk about this plan in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that made me feel so good mm -hmm. uh, about it. And then Dave and I sat long Monday night, and that was a long night. I wasn't even, this is funny <laughs> now, I, I wasn't even ready. I didn't bring any, because I had a same day flight, so I didn't right. bring anything with me, and I was like, Dave, I don't have any. He said, well, get some shaving stuff, and <laughs> you know, we'll get you out in the Be morning. Be ready to so, stay a while. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I went back to Indiana early Tuesday morning, and then Dave and I reconnected later on in the afternoon, and really was surprised, because I, you know, I, I felt like the interview went well, and mm -hmm. And Dave, Dave's been great through this whole thing and right. the, um, the, the, give, the give and take of the process. And I think that familiarity for both of us made the whole process a little bit more comfortable. And then I guess officially, you know, by, by Tuesday night, uh, you know, he had, uh, you know, offered the job and we worked out the details. And then mm -hmm. by Tuesday night, I signed. And then uh, we were trying to keep it under wraps until Thursday. But unfortunately, uh, in today's day and age, you know, it kind of got out there a little early. But right. Uh, so that was the process, and it was a great learning process for me, and I appreciate everybody who was involved in it. You'd been here before, Coach. I mean, you'd been at Elon for five seasons. You knew the place, but still, why this job and, and why now? Well, we're sitting in this room. Uh, you know, we, we didn't have the luxury of this facility when we were here. And, you know, I, I said this yesterday during the press conference. I, I was... Uh, we, we've had a great run at Ball State, and I really met a lot of great people and parents and alumni up there and Suzanne as well. So it wasn't like I was sitting in Muncie, every FCS job that would open up uh, was I applying to or even had a remote interest in. But obviously when, when this job opened and, um, you know, I felt like there was an interest, you know, uh, on behalf of the university. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like someone said during this process, you know, how often during our career uh, does a head coaching position open and how often is it at a place that you embrace and that Suzanne and I really uh, it was a great five years here right so all the stars were kind of aligned mm -hmm. and uh, it's just that time in my life I'm almost 50 years old I've been doing this almost 30 years and uh, I'm ready to take on this new challenge and be a head coach so uh, like I said I couldn't be more excited you've got 26 years of experience under your belt as an yeah. assistant coach and a lot of those years as an offensive coordinator what are the hallmarks of a Rich Skrosky <laughs> offensive system? That's some pretty good quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, hurt, we're, we were joking earlier. <laughs> you know, really, I've been so fortunate. Uh, you know, even going back to Columbia, you know, three schools ago, Jeff Otis was, was still holds a lot of the records at Columbia, which has been playing football for well over 100 years. Right. And, uh, you know, Jeff ended up playing in the NFL for, you know, not, not a star, but, you know, let's face it, we'd all sign up to do that. You sure. know, had, had a pretty good, you know, good run in the NFL. And then obviously here with Scott Riddle, uh, right. Scott still holds 
I, I don't pretty much every significant record. Mm -hmm. And then so fortunate to coach uh, Keith Winning at, at Ball State. I, I miss him already. Uh, he and his family and the work ethic he brought brought to to the table. So really, that that's been the commonality. You know, mm -hmm. the great quarterback. And uh, you know, I, I'd like to think we do a good job coaching him and getting him prepared to play on Saturday. And the and the common theme is you know dare to be great. They have they have to embrace that they are special. Right. I, I don't, I'm, we're not backing away. You know, the quarterback position is the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. And you could say we treat him the same as the left guard. We don't treat him the same mm -hmm. as the left guard. That bar is as high as it's going to go. Uh, they are going to be the pinnacle of the offense. And if, if we're going to go the way they go. So that's really been the common theme. And I can't wait to, you know, get started here with the quarterbacks here at Elon. Of course, for them to be able to throw and for guys to be able to run, it all starts up front. Yep. What kind of an athlete are you looking to recruit on, on the offensive and defensive line? Yeah, that matter? well, you know, we, we've kind of always uh, broke down the offensive line position. Certainly during that run here, 06 to 10, we, we had some great linemen. Yep. And, uh, you know, we look at the tackles a little bit than, uh, different than the guards. You know, the, the tackles need to be athletic. They need to pass protect. They need to play on the edge a little bit more space. You know, the guards, and you think about the great run we had here. Rodney Austin is still playing with the Lions. Uh, I think he's active now, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, and off the practice squad. And, and uh, before him, David Harrison and John Rubertone. I mean, those are, those are good players yeah. now. But those guys, you know, the weight room downstairs, I want guards that can lift the world. I want them to be the strongest guys that we can possibly get. Uh, and, and that is a regardless of what their dimensions are. You know, right. but typically they've been a little shorter than our tackles, and uh, you know, uh, but but heavy's okay there. And then the center needs to be the captain. You mm -hmm. know, he needs to be the smart guy. He's going to run the ship, uh, communicative wise. So that's kind of the way I see the the offensive line forming. Defensively, yeah. uh, Elon fans got used to some pretty stingy defenses during the time yeah. you were here on the other side of the ball. Obviously, that defense in 2009, the year that right. Elon went to the playoffs, that's right. a that's a 100-year flood kind of defense, yeah. the way that, that defense played. But what will you look for uh, in a defensive coordinator, and, and how much will you be involved in the formation and the uh, the, the structure of that defensive unit? Uh, well, I, if everything works out the way, I, I, I hope it does with our staff. Um, I, I'm going to be a head coach, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm going to certainly have a very active role on offense, but I am going to, you know, make sure that, you know, I know what's happening on defense. And here's what I've learned as an offensive coach. Everybody, you know, in the press conference, everybody says, we're going to be an attacking, uh, aggressive defense, and they need those words. Well, here, here's the way I see it. Uh, in the last few years uh, up, in the, up in the MAC, I, I've observed a lot of defenses. We played in the bowl game uh, following the 2012 season, and we played this team that now everybody kind of knows about, but mm -hmm. they were not a non-automatic quali qualifier last year in Central Florida. Mm -hmm. And I can remember getting my hands on their tapes uh, would mm -hmm. have been about a year ago now. And you can tell when a team's a good defense because here, here are the common traits. They get lined up, mm -hmm. they play fast, they run to the ball, and they tackle. We, I, I'm not going to say how much we're going to blitz. I'm not going to say we're going to play X amount of man coverage. I'm not going to say we're going to play X amount of zone coverage. But those traits, whatever scheme you, you – you can be a 3-4 team, a 4-down team, a uh, hybrid team, what people are calling hybrid defense mm -hmm. now. Uh, you could be any of those schemes, but those are going to be the traits. You need to get lined up. You need to play fast. You need to run to the ball. You need to tackle, tackle the football. Right. And no matter what configuration you do it in, those four fundamentals you're going to see here at, at Elon. Those are your philosophies on either side of the ball. You started a bit of a Twitter sensation at the news conference to introduce you as the next head coach with embrace the grind, yeah. a, a, a saying that you you really like. Uh, is that the overall operating system for your football team to embrace the grind? Talk about what that means and yeah. how that philosophy will translate to the work ethic you expect your players and your assistant coaches to bring to this building and the practice field every day. You know, David, I, doing this as long as I've done it, and, and you hear all these axioms and mm -hmm. philosophies, um, embrace the grind means this, that <clears throat> every day you're going to come and, and become a better football player. And it starts in the recruiting process. I, I, th I, don't think, I don't think it starts on Saturday afternoon, certainly. I don't even know if it starts on Tuesday's practice. I don't think it even starts in the weight room. 
It starts when you recruit them. Mm. And you, you sit in that living room with those parents and that kid, and you look them in the eye, and you tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. You don't paint the picture that this is all, all roses. You don't paint the picture. We have as good a product to sell here in Elon. I, I don't. Just come. It, it sells itself. Right. What I'm going to sell them is the challenge of playing Division I football. Uh, I, I use this phrase with the kids. You're going to work harder than 90% of the adult population. Think mm. about that statement. Mm. Think about that statement. Very telling. Because you're going to do that. If you're not, we're not going to be successful. And if you don't embrace that grind, because that's a grind, mm -hmm. let's face it. Mm -hmm. Saturday is fun. Saturday afternoons is passionate. You know, when you, when you get out there in front of your home fans or you go to a place, you know, uh, like a Duke who's had such a great year, that's mm -hmm. going to be our opener next year. Right. Cut it loose, have fun. That, that's play day. That's what I call that. That's play day. <laughs> right. The other 360 days of the year, that's work day. Right. And if you don't embrace that grind, that grind will chew you up. And uh, I, I think you see it every day, every year across the landscape of college football. You can tell the guys that embrace the grind, and I see it in our opponents. You know, at Ball State this past year, we played a few teams that you look at on tape, you say, boy, they got a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. They don't grind. You, you could tell they don't. Right. They're not in, as invested. So it, it's going to be a mantra. I, I didn't know it hit Twitter because I'm, I, I don't even have Twitter. But uh, <laughs> that's cool to see. That's cool to see. Yeah. So the guys that are here, and hopefully they heard that, they, they, better be, they better be ready to do that. And then obviously the guys are going to go out and recruit. And you mentioned recruiting uh, and, and the lifeblood of any program. Yep. And it starts with, with that. Uh, and you've had the advantage of continuing to recruit yeah. this area of North Carolina even since you've been at Ball State. Yep. How much of a plus is that for you in getting this program jump-started right away as you get here? Well, I, I, I would think it had a lot to do with the selection. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think the fact that I have a familiarity and the high school coaches, and here, here's what I'm going to say, and I want this message to get out. Mm -hmm. Our recruiting base is going to start in the state of North Carolina. This is our home state. We have as good a product to sell to any of these kids throughout the state, and that means from the mountains to the coast mm -hmm. and everything in between. Uh, the relationship that I've developed with the people here in the central part of the state, you know, from Winston out to Raleigh and certainly this, this local area. The, these high school coaches in Alamance County, and, and I know it's a very small area and it's not a lot of uh, uh, schools, but I've never recruited an area where I've developed those relationships. And I, I've recruited in like 32 different states, I think, mm -hmm. around the country. Right. Uh, John Kirby is like a dear friend. He's not, it's not just a recruiter coach. Uh, Steve Johnson uh, over at Cummings and, and Coach Green uh, brought his team here to team camp. Coach mm -hmm. Story, to see him here yesterday at the press right. conference was so, you don't know how much that meant. And Jeff Snuffer and the job he's done at Western Alamance. Mm -hmm. and, and I could go on and on and into Guilford County and mm -hmm. Tommy Norwood and, and Coach Gillespie at Page. So it makes it so easy because as I go in those schools, that's my, to me, it's become home. You know, it really right. has. So uh, I think we can hit the ground running. But the, the message is it's going to start here in the state of North Carolina. An assistant coaching staff that you'll be putting together very shortly. Yeah. They'll obviously play a huge role in that recruiting yeah. process. What are the qualities you're going to look for in your assistant coaches? Well, I've had conversation with several uh, potential hires. Mm -hmm. And the first two things I said this, and I think that's the neat thing about being a head coach. Mm -hmm. you, you get to make those decisions. Really, and I know where you're going with that question, are they going to have North Carolina backgrounds or CAA backgrounds? Mm -hmm. You know, here, here's the common theme, though. Every guy I hire, I'm going to genuinely like, and I'm going to know that person. Mm -hmm. So that when we're in this office, because so much of it has to be based on those relationships. And then secondly, every guy I hire, I'm going to trust. I don't want there ever to be a day that we're sitting in the office where, where there's not I want anyone to feel comfortable enough in front of me mm -hmm. or in front of the coordinator or in front of the position coach or in front of the strength coach and be able to speak their mind because that ultimately is what makes a good organization is great communication. And if there's any uh, broken pieces in that trust or in that communication and you don't feel comfortable enough, I don't think it's going to happen. So that, those are going to be the first two requisites. Right. And then uh, we're, we're going after a pretty talented staff. I'll say that right now. So we're not going to release any names until hopefully we get it all put together. But if we can get the guys, and, and Dave has been great and generous with the pool of money, and I think we could put together, uh, I think we could put together a pretty talented group. 
Let's shift gears for a minute and talk about something that you mentioned in the news conference yesterday. Uh, you mentioned that you want this program, one, to be integrated and fully a part of this university, mm -hmm. and two, that this program is our program. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that to fans, to boosters, mm -hmm. to alumni. What do you mean by those phrases and how do you get there with that message? Well, the, the, I, I truly believe it is our program. Just look at the building we're sitting mm -hmm. in. Rich, Rich Skrowski had nothing to do with this building. <laughs> this, you know, I think it's one of the great things about working in higher education, the philanthropy that, and you look at it across the country, that's shown on, on behalf of these families um, that have such a passion about a university like Elon, it, it's always been something that's been mind-boggling to me. So me as a head football coach, to me, I'm just part of the part of the wheel, you know, uh, and I want to keep it turning. So to me, it, it would be an injustice to be exclusive and not inclusive. Mm -hmm. So so that's where it's going to start, and we want it to be uh, fan-friendly. We want it to be open. We had a function last night down at the Best Western, and. Uh, it had to be four or five people. Coach, are our practices still all going to be open? Well, yeah, they're still all going to be open. Right. Come out with your chairs. We want people to know that. And then, you know, I, I think educate in the community. You know, we're going to get the faculty involved here because I think, I think there's always that, that tension sometimes mm -hmm. between the academia and athletics. And we're so close to one another. What we do as coaches and what they do as professors, I think, is it mirrors one another. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to we're trying to create a, a kid that we want to send out in society and be productive. Mm -hmm. And when we get those professors involved in this process and they see what our kids go through and how smart they really need to be, how much information that we give them on the football field, how detailed they need to be, how responsible they need to be, they're like, I can't. You know, we we've had professors both here at Elon with Pete and at Ball State mm -hmm. sit in our meetings. And I, I can't tell you how many professors have walked out of those meetings and say, Coach, you just, you just taught a 500 level course. Right. That blows them away. And you know what happens, they, they go back into their departments and they're like, hey, I was with the football team this week. I gotta see what those kids do. So again, I, I think it right. just helps everybody. Uh, I want this to be a source of pride for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and whether that's the, the, the actual college community here, the university community, mm -hmm. Or, or the boosters and, and the um, you know Burlington Alamance County community. I, I really want people to be proud of this uh, football program. You talked about that this program and this university are there to mold and, and build yeah. young people and, and to give them the tools they need to succeed in life. And we're all the sum of, of the parts and the experiences that have shaped us so far in our lives. What are the things that have played the most important role in your life, not only as a coach, but personally as well? Well, that's a good question. and. Really, I, I owe so much to the game of football. You know, I, I, uh, I probably wouldn't have gotten in and gone to college if it weren't for somebody taking a chance on mm -hmm. me. Um, I have seen, um, you know, like I said earlier, I, I've been just about throughout this whole country because of football. Mm -hmm. The relationships that I've developed uh, over the years, not just with our players, but with the parents of players uh, right. because of football. So. Uh, what has really had the biggest impact on my life other than my family has really been the game of football and it's mm -hmm. taught me so many things and, and probably more so you know I, I'm a little different you know I don't have this uh, you know I didn't play in the NFL and I didn't have a, an outstanding college career by any means you know I was just an average high school player but uh, the coaching part of football I, I've been so fortunate in the 30 years and I'm going all the way back to high school uh -huh. you know uh, first guy that we worked together, Richie Hanson, head coach at St. Peter's Prep, who's still there running one of the better programs in the country, mm -hmm. had an impact on me. To the guys when I GA'd Dick Anderson, and uh, they, they've had a big, big impact on my life. So what's been the biggest influence in my life is the game of football. It must feel good then to have been here yesterday and seen some of your former players awesome. here at Elon be in the room and, and know how the game has impacted you and to feel like maybe you've had that kind of impact upon a young man's yeah, life along yeah. the way too. It, it's, been, uh, it's been humbling. You know, the last, uh, I guess, 48 hours now, the mm -hmm. amount of text and voicemails and social media and uh, that, that, you know, our, our former players, you know, and again, their parents and uh, that reached out. It, it's really been, uh, it's why we do what we do. It's mm -hmm. really been touching. Let's talk about uh, who you admired growing up. Uh, who did you watch 
uh, on on Sundays or on Saturdays on television. Who are your who are your idols on the football field, and maybe who's your coaching idol as well? That's a good one. I wasn't ready for that question. Uh, <laughs> you know, growing up in the Northeast, it's kind of funny because you know, uh, really the Northeast is dominated by by the pro mm -hmm. uh, the pro level of all sports. You know, you, you ask kids, and it's the Jets and the Giants, or you might. You know, the Cowboys, you know, Suzanne, now my wife, big Cowboys fan, big Cowboys <laughs> fan. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if I ever had that that one coach, you know, mm -hmm. that, that I would say, you know, a, a Bear Bryant. Um, I, I think it's really been a collection of coaches that, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of admired and uh, I've studied a lot about the game and going mm -hmm. all the way back to George Hallis and uh, Vince Lombardi, you know, the – uh, Moranis did that bio on, on Coach Lombardi. It's, right. it's kind of dated now, but one of the better uh, coaching books I've read. Uh, right. and, and certainly, uh, you know, Bear Bryant. And, uh, so all, all kind of the, the main ones that you would think of. But uh, I, I don't know if there's any one specific that I would refer to. Now let's get back to the, the task at hand and, yeah. and the move that Elon will make yeah. in the coming year to the Colonial Athletic Association. I'm sure it had to be an attractive facet of this job because of that challenge. How will you attack that challenge and what are the things that are going to be needed for this program to be successful in the CAA? Well, that, that's where I'm going to refer to that process, the interview process. You right. know, I, th I think the university is making this move uh, in a, a little bit better preparation is, you know, you've been around this program mm -hmm. for quite a while. I think when Elon made the jump from Division Two to Division One, not sure if the, the foresight was there enough to have the resources in place to make that move. And mm -hmm. I, I think, therefore, there was that kind of longer transition period mm -hmm. than maybe most of us wanted. Mm -hmm. I think making this move in the CAA, I think there's been so much research, and Dave impressed me so much about where, where our students are coming from, where are our alumni, where, where are those dollars coming from. Right. So I think as we move in the CAA, I think we're, we're, you know, and let's face it, we're financially prepared to do so. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, I think we could put together a really good group of coaches and uh, are traveling going up there. They've taken into account, you know, how many flights it's going to be now. So mm -hmm. I think we're prepared from an administrative standpoint. And then from a football standpoint, let's buckle up because it, it is a great conference and it's a conference I've been familiar with for, for a quite a long time, mm -hmm. spending all the time I've spent in the Northeast. I think this year alone, and I might be wrong, but I think this is true, I think eight teams were in the top 25 at some point during right. the season. It ended with six. <laughs> and as we speak today, two are still playing of the eight in the quarterfinals as we enter the uh, quarterfinal round of right. the FCS. So uh, it, it's going to take uh, a lot of work, but I do think the university's uh, preparation of going into this conference is going to you know, allow us to be successful. Have you had the most memorable moment of your coaching career yet, or do you envision that it's yet to come? You know, embrace the grind. Let's go day to day. I, I've had so many great moments, and, and so many of them here at Elon. And, and uh, I can't say enough about the five years that I spent earlier, but I know there's going to be a lot of bright, di bright, bright days in the future that, uh, as I look back and reflect, will be great as well. You're excited about meeting the team for the first time. Yeah. As we sit and do this interview today, they've just left for Christmas break. Right. You've mentioned you're excited to have them come back for that first Monday when they'll be here. Yeah. What has to happen between that Monday and next September when the ball goes in the air at come, Duke? Come to work every day. That, that's right. really it. That, that's going to be the driving force. When you step foot in this building, and whether it's to lift weights, do agility drills, run, uh, get into skill work, watch tape, um, and then into spring practice and summer workouts and right up till Duke. It's get better every day. Don't worry about Duke. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about Duke. Worry about us and the day and attack each one of those things and we'll be ready for Duke if we do that. That sounds great. Well, Coach, I know I speak on behalf of a lot of Elon alums, Elon fans, benefactors, and friends of the university when I say good luck. And we look forward to uh, many prosperous years with you at the helm of the Phoenix program. David, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's Elon head coach Rich Skrosky visiting with us here just uh, 24 hours after he was named the 21st head coach in program history.